Peace. Welcome to my advanced vinyasa flow featuring some handstands, a lot of twists, some other good things in between those as well. We'll start out in a comfortable seat, maybe sukhasana cross-legged. Close the eyes. Allow the palms to just rest on the thighs. Shoulders can come back and down, allowing a more of a lift up at the heart. And just feel that support underneath you through the seat, the feet. See if you can anchor down a little bit deeper through those areas to lift up taller, extending through the crown of the head. Even if you're feeling a, a little fatigued in a seated position, just try to bring a sense of ease into it. Let go of any expectations you have for what the body should feel like right now or what uh, the body should be able to do during practice and just bring in some acceptance of how things are. Deepen your breath. If Ujjayi breath is in your practice, you can go ahead and start that right now. Otherwise, just deepening the inhales, lengthening the exhales a little bit longer. Deep breath in. Exhale, maybe parting the lips, release. And gently open the eyes. We'll start out with a little twist, just seated down right where you are. Get, bring the arms out to the side, flip the palms upward and reach up. Anchoring downward through the tail to lift up higher through the hands. We're gonna twist over towards the right. So start by just revolving the torso and the chest over, sending the hips back towards the front of the room. And when you're ready, right hand can come to the floor, left hand to the knee. Use the hands to revolve yourself a little bit more, not letting go of all that core work we use to twist out without the hands. And you can gaze over that right shoulder, just uh, turning the gaze over on every exhale a little bit more. On the next inhale, we're going to come back to center, lengthen again, and start to revolve over towards the left this time. Drawing the belly in to help deepen the twist. And when you're ready, again, left hand can find the floor behind or right hand to the knee. Don't let go of all that nice core work we used to get into the twist initially, though. Keep the gaze over the left shoulder, drawing the elbows low and back to bring the heart up a little bit higher. And now lengthen, reach up back to center. And exhale, hands can come out on the floor. We'll find a downward dog. So hands come to the front of the mat, spread the fingers a lot, tuck the toes behind, lift the knees and act as if you're coming into child's pose. So your hips are gonna come deeply on top of the heels, press the mat away, lengthening through the sides of the body, keeping all that length. You can start to extend the heels, maybe pedaling off the feet. Just finding a little bit of comfort in your first downward dog. Maybe you're rocking the head side to side, swaying the hips as well, anything that feels good in the body. Go ahead and inhale yourself into plank. We'll find cheetah pose from here. So you're gonna round the upper back and tuck the tail, lift the right heel away from the floor and draw the knee in, pointing the toes behind. Keep on lifting the heel in towards the glute, puffing up the upper back, belly in to get that knee in a little bit higher. Inhale. And exhale, see how lightly you can place that right foot on the floor. Coming into runner's lunge, maybe you're on fingertips just to lift the torso away from the thigh so you can extend longer. Power up that back leg by flexing the left quadricep. On your inhale, we're coming up to high lunge. And exhale, you can reach the fingertips back. Coming into an unsupported revolve low lunge, left fingertips are gonna to come towards the floor, open up towards the right side of the room, using the core and the legs to get you deeper into this twist before you allow the left hand to uh, drop onto the floor. Right hand can reach up towards the sky for your revolve low lunge. Keep on twisting the heart towards the knee, drawing the knee more in towards the heart. Deep breath in. 
next hour, stepping back in a side plank from here. So maybe you're using hands to support it or just come onto the outside of the left foot. Right foot can slide to come on top of the left and reach up using the right hand. Uh, draw the left bicep forward, drawing the left shoulder blade into the back just to protect that lower arm. Inhale, maybe you're turning the gaze up towards the sky. And exhale, both hands on the floor. Set yourself back in a downward dog. Deepen the breath. Draw the belly and tilt the tail high towards the sky. Even spread the sit bones behind. We'll do the other side. First, inhaling into plank. Find a little higher plank here by puffing up the upper back and tucking the tail strongly. Left heel is going to lift this time before you draw the knee in towards the chest, pointing the toes back. Keep on compressing the calf into the hamstring here, belly into the thigh. Deep breath in, spread the fingers. Exhale, lightly step that left foot in between the hands. We're finding that runner's lunge again. Left ankle above the knee, back leg powering up, lifting the back of the thigh towards the sky. See if you can bring the belly in away from that front thigh. Inhale up into high lunge. And we'll start to find that revolve low lunge. So right fingertips reach forward, left fingertips reach back, hovering, twisting the abdomen towards the left side of the room, stacking the shoulders. When you're ready, right hand comes to the floor. Left hand extends high. Draw the belly in. Make sure that left hip is sending itself back instead of coming out towards the side of the room. Lengthen forward through the crown of the head. Inhale. We're stepping back into side plank, Bashi Stasana again. So maybe the left foot comes back just a little bit more to help you come onto the outside of the right foot. Slide the left leg back. It can come up kind of parallel towards the right foot or just right on top of it. Maybe you're turning the gaze up as that right bicep tries to spin towards the front of the room. Deep breath in. Exhale gently, both hands on the floor. Downward dog. Gradually start to bring that gaze, that drishti point a little bit higher up into the insides of the thighs, maybe at the abdomen if that's okay. Revolve the armpits towards opposite sides of the room, spinning the forearms a little bit closer. We're going to walk the hands towards the feet, so just walk them up. Little bend the knees if you need, finding Uttanasana. Maybe the first one you're just uh, grabbing onto alternate elbows, sinking towards the floor. If you'd like to use the hands to draw the upper body deeper into the thighs, you can go ahead and find that. Keep a little bend in the knees, even if you can straighten them out all the way. So we're going to walk out the fingertips a little bit farther towards the front of the mat. Not too much. Press the hips back, kind of like a short stand downward dog and just on fingertips lengthening out the legs a little bit more weight into the heels if you'd like so we're going to do some handstand prep work to get to the front of the mat hands are going to come onto the floor shoulder distance apart spread the fingers a lot a lot of weight into the fingers and you're going to shift the weight forward, straightening out the arms, maybe coming onto tippy toes, leaning the weight forward. You may feel a little lift to lift the toes for just a brief second and plant them a little bit closer towards the wrist. If not, you can just shift the feet a little bit closer, a little hop instead. Trying to find a lift, lifting up through the tail, drawing the belly in, even drawing inward at the pelvic floor. Maybe you find some lift, maybe not. It may take a couple thousand times to do it, but do the practice work instead, even if you don't feel uh, the lift. Couple more presses, almost there. From here, bend the knees, take an Utkatasana, sending hips back, fingertips reach up, fierce pose. 
Draw the belly in away from the thighs. Send the tail towards the floor so we're not back bending but lengthening through the lower back. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. And maybe you hop all the way back to Chaturanga, bending the elbows, knees deep in towards the chest, shift the weight forward, land lightly. Go ahead and come all the way onto the belly. We're going to do an unsupported cobra, so lengthen back through the toes, then plant the tops of the feet into the floor. Tuck the tail, draw the belly, and hands can stack underneath the elbows. And we'll use the belly and the legs to curl the heart forward. Shift the palms towards the body, body towards the palms, so the belly may be coming a little bit closer towards the front of the room. Lengthen through the top of the head, not dumping it in between the shoulder blades, but extending outwards. From here, see if you can keep that height by lifting the palms. Bring the hands to either side of the chest, squeeze the shoulders up and away from the ears. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the floor, tuck the toes. Come to Downward Dog. I'm going to take a vinyasa with the right leg on top of the left here. So just bring the right toes onto the left heel. Shift forward through plank. Exhale, shoulders in front of the wrist. Chaturanga, elbows close to the sides. We'll inhale into Up Dog. Setting the tail towards the floor, shoulders back. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward dog. Reset. Other side, right foot on the floor as you bring the left toes right on top of the heel. Inhale, forward into plank. Keep the elbows close to the sides, belly and tail tucked as you lower in a straight line. Inhale into upward dog. Urva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, back to your downward dog. We'll find our way to the front of the mat. If you'd like to hop, maybe an easier way, spread the fingers, bend the elbows back, kind of like your chaturanga game. Bend the knees and bring the torso right on top of the thighs. See if you can keep the torso glued to the thighs as you hop up and glue the heels towards the Glutes, we'll do this a couple times. Keeping the gaze forward, straightening out the arms. Eventually, you'll land in between the hands. Try to do that nice and softly. Inhale into your flat spine. Exhale, full forward fold, drawing the crown of the head towards the floor, but lifting the hips high. And we'll inhale into Utkatasana, fierce pose again. Bring the shoulders into the back, but lengthen the armpits towards the front of the room. We'll start to come into a revolved fierce pose. So we're going to turn over towards the left side of the room, drawing the left shoulder above the right, keeping the hips back, knees parallel-ish, using the core to do this twist. Then the hands can come together and press into the outside of that left thigh to revolve the heart over towards the left side of the room. Try to stack the shoulders. Notice if that right knee is poking out, draw it back a little bit. If the right hip is poking out, draw that back parallel to the long edge of the mat as well. Inhale back to fierce pose. Exhale, we'll start to twist over to the other side. So again, extending the arms forward, bring the right shoulder above the left, draw the belly in, sending the hips back. Squeeze weight into the inner thighs, grounding down through the heels. Hands can touch now. Bring that left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Keeping all that leg and core work uh, we use to get into the fierce pose, not just letting it go just because our elbow and hands are touching the thighs now. And hold back to center. And exhale, hands to the floor. We'll step by the left foot to the back of the mat, finding a goddess squat here. Stance is going to be a little wide. Turn the toes out towards the knees. Settle those hips pretty low. Hands are going to come onto the thighs, 
just to press them away from the midline, but if you were to release the hands, make sure the knees don't come back and you wanna keep on extending them towards the sides of the room. Just move a little side to side, making some space with the ankles, the shins, the calves. And we'll find a twist. So with the hands on the inside to the thighs, the right shoulder is going to come to the floor as the left shoulder turns back. Turn the gaze towards the ceiling. Draw the belly in too deep in the twist, grounding through the outsides of the feet a little bit more to send the knees away from the body. Inhale. Exhale back to center. Keeping the hips low, we'll do this on the other side. The left shoulder turns down, right shoulder comes back, pressing the heart towards the right side of the room. Keep on extending forward through the crown of the head. Inhale. Exhale back to center. Hands can come onto the floor. Walk yourself towards the front foot. Briefly in a runner's lunge here, we're gonna step the right foot back to meet the left and find downward dog. Smooth out that breath. From my one-legged downward dog or from downward dog, shift forward into plank again, finding your cheetah, lift the right heel, Bring the right knee in towards the chest, puff up the upper back. Gonna do a little exercise here where on the exhale, we drop the knee closer towards the floor. On the inhale, draw the belly, bring the knee as high as you can. One more time like that, knee can drop. Then lift it up super high, hold here. Then the right foot can come in between the hands. Inhale up to high lunge. And we'll start to revolve towards the right side of the room, finding a revolved high lunge this time. So again, right shoulder is going to stack above the left. Keep the right knee facing forward. Draw the belly into twist deeper. Then you can bring the hands to heart center. Left elbow to the outside of the right thigh, kind of like with our revolved fierce pose. Make sure the legs are still doing all of their work. Back knee coming away from the floor. And feel free to stay right here unless you'd like to extend the arms and bringing the left hand to the floor and extending the right hand high is easy. Maybe bring the right hand behind the back, a little half bind. Maybe the left hand joins it and clasp onto the hands. Keep on pulling uh, the bind closer towards the tail, squeezing the shoulders back, opening the heart towards the right side of the room. Try a little balance here, revolved uh, bird of paradise. Left foot can step forward. Bring the weight onto the left foot as you come onto the right toes. Maybe you stay right here. You can lift up, bringing that right leg with you. Maybe the right knee stays bent, or you can start to straighten out the leg forward. You can turn the gaze towards the wall behind you if you'd like to. Keep on squeezing the thighs inward, revolving the right side of the body towards the right side of the room. Gently bend the right knee, bring it back down with as much control as you can. Step the left foot back. We'll come into our high lunge. Release. Exhale the hands to the floor. Step the right foot back. We're gonna come into side plank. This time the left foot's gonna ground onto the floor. Bottom leg is gonna wrap around the left, kind of like an eagle leg, side plank. Keep on squeezing the inner thighs. Maybe you get the top of the right foot to the inside of the left thigh, or the calf rather, and extend upward through the left fingertips. Keep on grounding through the outside of the left foot. See if you can revolve the heart high. Maybe you're extending the left fingertips towards the wall in front of you. Inhale. Exhale both hands to the floor. Dear Vinyasa, coming forward through plank. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale into up dog or cobra, sending the tail towards the floor, drawing the belly button in. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward dog. See if you can activate the toes a little bit more. Spreading those may get you uh, some free space behind the Achilles heel. 
outsides of the feet so that maybe you ground the heels a little bit deeper. Inhale into your plank. Going to do the cheetah pose on the other side. So lift the left heel, draw the knee in towards the chest, puffing up the upper back. On the exhale, allow the knee to lower. And on the inhale, pick it back up as high as you can. Do that again. Exhale, lower the knee. Inhale, reach up high. Hover here. And the left foot will find the floor in between the hands. Round the back, big toe mount. Inhale yourself into high lunge. We're going to start to revolve over towards the left side. So left shoulder above the right. Reaching forward, keep that left knee bent, right leg extending away from the floor. When you're ready, hands can come to heart center. Keep on turning here. Right elbow can find the outside of the left thigh. Draw the heart towards the thumbs, keeping the thumbs where they are. Elbows stacked, trying to stack the shoulders as well. So maybe you're sliding the right hand towards the floor, keeping that same bend in the left knee, and you extend the left fingertips up towards the sky. Stay here. Maybe you're finding a half bind, drawing the left hand behind. Maybe a full bind as you connect the fingertips. Squeeze the shoulder blades in towards one another. Open up at the heart. If you'd like to find our standing balance for Bald Bird of Paradise, turn the gaze forward. Step the right foot forward. Bring the weight onto the right foot as you come onto the left toes. Lift the left knee up away from the floor. Stand up nice and tall. Maybe you straighten out that left leg and maybe you turn the gaze towards the wall behind. Squeeze inner thighs, extend upward through the crown of the head. Come out of the poses uh, with as much control as you came in. Left foot can find the floor. Right leg's gonna step back, undo the bind. You can inhale, arms upright, and exhale, hands to the floor. Step the left foot back. We'll find that eagle side plank again. So onto the outside of the left foot and the right foot. Right foot's gonna stay on the floor, ground through the bottom of that foot as the left leg wraps around the right. Bending the knees at first, you find uh, the left top of the foot behind the right calf. If possible, you don't have to. And extend the right hand high. Lift the hips, trying to turn the hips up towards the sky, revolving the heart as well. Maybe you're reaching the right fingertips forward. The gaze can turn over the fingertips as well. Deep breath in. Exhale, both hands to the floor. We'll do vinyasa coming forward through plank. Maybe this time on fingertips. Spread the fingers a lot. Maybe come onto the right side, see how that feels. You can bring the right hand back on the floor. Try the left side. Or maybe you're ready to come on two fingertips on both sides. Just keep on pressing into each and every finger. You can bring the hands back down onto the floor for vinyasa. Or maybe shoulders come in front of the wrists, elbows come to the sides, and you lower through chaturanga all the way on those fingertips. We'll inhale into upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. Smooth out that breath, locating the heartbeat. See if you can notice it slowed down just from a slowing down the momentum of your breath. So we're gonna hop to the front of the mat again, maybe during your uh, cannonball hops like you did the last time, or just landing lightly front of the mat. We'll lower all the way to a seat here, so you're gonna come through Utkatasana, lower the hips on top of the calves. Maybe you're coming onto the toes if that's not accessible for you. And just come onto the seat as easily as you possibly can. We'll find Navasana, boat pose from here. Bring the inner thighs all the way together. You can start by bringing the hands to the backs of the thighs as you lean back, bringing the shoulders together. 
lifting the heart forward. Maybe you're on toes here and you stay right here or legs can come parallel to the floor, maybe extending them a little bit higher. We are going to find a twist though. I find it easier if my legs aren't extended all the way. Hands can come to heart center. Inhale as you revolve over towards the right knee. Stay forward, abdomen revolves. Exhale, come back to center. Inhale over towards the left this time, making sure energy through the thighs, out the toes, and back to center. Maybe the next one you do, you want to have hands extended. Again, legs can extend as well. Over towards the right, squaring the shoulders towards the, the right side of the room. Inhale back. Exhale over towards the left, making sure the legs aren't coming out towards the right side, but staying neutral. Inhale back. Exhale, you can come all the way out to the back. Bring the knees in towards the abdomen. Just soften the core, pressing the thighs into the belly to release. We'll do another core pose while we're down here. Revolved abdomen pose. Arms can come out to a T, extend the heels up towards the sky for a, your supine staff pose. Keep that squeezing of the inner thighs and the calves and the heels. We're going to lift the hips three inches over towards the right. And exhale with the legs connected, bring those feet all the way towards the left hand. Grounding down through the right side to make that happen. Inhale all the way back up. Shift the hips over towards the left this time. Allowing the toes to come over towards the right side. Belly and revolving the belly towards the left side of the room. Inhale, back up breath. One more time. If you need to bend the knees, you can do that. Otherwise, moving with your breath. Toes over towards the left. Belly revolving towards the right. Inhale, back up. Make sure you're grounding through the shoulder blades as well. Pick the hips up over towards the left. Bring the thighs to the right. Inhale, belly, connecting the lower back into the floor, zip it back up, and knees can come in towards one another again. Pull into the thighs, maybe rocking side to side, give your back a little massage. So we're going to find a controlled way to get back up right here. Bring yourself into a boat type shape. Feet are going to come all the way together, knees splayed, so maybe you can gather up enough energy to bring yourself all the way upright. Maybe it requires a little rocking. See how little rocking you can do to sit all the way up. Hands to the floor. Jump yourself to the back of the mat. Downward dog. So we're going to walk the hands towards the feet again, all the way back to the mat, finding Uttanasana forward fold in your way. Maybe you're grabbing onto the backs of the ankles or maybe arms interlaced behind the thighs, tilting more weight into the toes in this one. Spread the sit bones behind. So we're going to do those handstand hops back towards the front of the mat. So again, ground the palms, separate the fingers a lot. See if you can suction up here, so maybe a little lift at the insides of the hands. Gonna lean the weight forward, coming onto your tippiest of tippy toes, shoulders in front of us, maybe lift, plant the feet onto the floor, do as many of those as you need to to get to the front of the mat. Just practicing our press work here. A lot of Uddiyana Bandha engaging the lower belly lock. Mula Bandha is around your root chakra, pelvic floor. Tied and all of that to feel a little more lift up through the hips. When you've made your way to the front of the mat, we'll step the right foot to the back of the mat this time. Finding Prasarita Padatanasana, wide legged forward fold. Feet are going to come pretty wide here. Inhale, flatten out the spine, turn the gaze forward. And exhale, maybe hands uh, towards or the insides of the feet are a little behind. Bend the elbows back like a chaturanga. Draw the crown of the head towards the floor. Feel a lift up through the insides of the thighs here. Pressing into the outsides of the thighs as well.
We're gonna walk the body over towards the right side. Maybe grab onto the back of the right heel. Left hand can come to the outside of the right foot and just pull the forehead towards the shin. See if you can keep the hips lifted uh, on top of the heels instead of coming behind. Make that little shift forward. And other side, walk the hands over towards the left. Same thing, left hand back of the heel, right hand to the foot, pull yourself over. Keep the hips high, we're not opening up the hips to either side of the room. Keep them exactly where they were for your normal wide-legged forward fold. Just uh, lengthening through the sides of the body to uh, come over and onto that left side. And walk the hands back to center. Few more handstand hops here. So hands come onto the floor, shift the weight forward onto the toes. Maybe do a little hop and the feet land lightly in between the hands. We'll do this a couple more times. So your normal handstand press, shifting weight forward, hop out wide this time. Lean the weight forward, hop. Close, feeling a little lift, maybe hop wide again. And this time walk yourself to the front of the mat. Left foot is gonna come back to meet the right, come back into your downward dog. Come back to that breath. And to your downward dog, bring the feet a little bit closer. We're going to inhale that right heel up towards the sky. Exhale, right knee in towards the chest for your cheetah. And then step the right foot in between the hands. Inhale up into your high lunge. And we'll come into revolved uh, half moon here, Pariburta Ardha Chandrasana. Coming from a uh, up into the floor. So you'll start revolving over towards the right side like we were coming into our revolved high lunge. Left fingertips are going to start to find the floor so the right hand reaches up. Bring the weight off of the back foot. Kind of hovering here. Left hand is going to aim about a foot in front of the right foot and out towards the left a little bit. Reach the right hand up towards the sky. Squeeze the inner thighs. Draw the belly in. Maybe you're turning the gaze towards the right fingertips. We want that upper body and back leg kind of a parallel towards the floor. See if you can extend those in two opposing directions. If you'd like to find a revolved sugar cane, bring uh, the left foot in. Maybe you're bending the knee to grab onto the inside of the foot, but then press the foot into the hand. Open up the heart towards the right side of the room. So we're stacking the right and left shoulder again. Inhale, release. Exhale, left foot to the floor, step back. Optional vinyasa if you'd like. Chaturanga, exhale. Inhale into your upward dog. And exhale, down dog. Keep on drawing the biceps inward. Lengthening the triceps towards the floor. Finding an opening at the heart, broadening the collarbones. We'll do that on the other side. Feet a little bit closer. Inhale the left leg up towards the sky, keeping the hips squared towards the mat. Exhale knee in towards the chest. Puff up the upper back high in your cheetah pose. The left foot is going to find the floor. Inhale, bring the arms up. High lunge. Start to revolve, making our way into that uh, revolved half moon. Left fingertips to reach back, right hand forward. Start to lean the weight forward, coming off the back toes. Find a gaze on the floor to help bring your right hand there. Right leg lifts a little bit higher. Left fingertips extend. Draw the belly in, revolve the abdomen towards the left side of the room. So if you want to find that sugar cane, just bend the right knee, reaching back, finding the inside of the right foot, then press the foot into the hand, maybe try to bring the knee parallel towards the floor, so lift the knee a little bit higher. Make sure you're breathing, the drishti can always come up towards the sky if you'd like. 
slowly release. Both hands to the floor, step back. Maybe you're trying your fingertip plank again if you'd like to in your optional vinyasa. Play with that lowering chaturanga. Maybe you're resting in child's pose instead or you're finding your belly down back bend. And then back to downward dog. Just notice if this downward dog may be a little bit easier than the other ones. Body's warmed up. Legs are getting straighter maybe. Maybe it's easier to press them out of way. And if it's not, don't worry about it. Okay, go ahead and set the knees onto the floor. We'll find child's pose. Widen the knees, placing the big toes together behind. Anchor the hips on the heels. Stretch the arms out in front. Just take a moment to rest, to soften. So we did all that uh, nice handstand prep work. I thought I'd uh, give you guys an opportunity to uh, come into the full pose. If you'd like to come to a wall, pause the video, and then uh, reset it when you're done there. Go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're going to come up uh, finding a one leg up at a time, kind of like your split or a stag legged handstand. We'll see where we're going. And start in a short stance, downward dog. Left foot is going to be your kickstand here first, so bend the knee and keep the thigh towards the abdomen. Remember when we were hopping forward, we were deep in our downward dog, knees in towards the chest, and we tried to hover that there to find your cannonball hop. Same thing just with one leg this time. So right leg can extend. Downward dog into that left thigh, keeping it connected. Maybe walk the left foot a little bit forward. Keep the right leg lifting, extending. Spread the fingers, turn the gaze forward. See if you can hop, gluing the knee towards the chest, heel in towards uh, the glute, and then lift up. The lower that left knee is, the easier it's going to be to balance. See if you can hover here. Maybe the right foot's pressing against the floor. You'll lower out the same way. Right leg can come towards the floor, a little bit of control, keeping the left knee in. Rest here, taking a child's pose, shaking out the wrists, giving them a little bit of a stretch before we find the other side. Make sure you do both sides. I know it's tempting to go for your easiest side every time. You'll uh, get the pose a little bit better, but then you're uh, neglecting that one side of the body. So make sure you do both. Same kind of shape, downward dog. Right knee comes a little bit farther forward this time. Bend the knee, keeping the abdomen pressed into the thigh. Left leg's gonna extend up. Keep the gaze forward and again. You'll reach out through that left leg, but keep the right knee connected in towards the chest. Heel in towards the glute. Don't worry about straightening out, the, out all the way unless you're uh, really deep into your handstands and it comes easily. First, just find a little bit of balance, straightening out. This is for when you've already uh, mastered your uh, stag leg, what I'm doing a little bit better. You can bring the right toes onto the floor, the left foot as well. Rest. Make sure those wrists and shoulders are feeling good before you move on to some other things. Okay, so we'll find our way into Viras and their hero's pose. The way this is going to work is the knees are going to connect. Maybe you're just going to sit on top of the heels if that variation is better for you, or widen the heels and sit the bottom in between. Press through the tops of the feet, lengthen the toes back as you squeeze the knees inward towards one another. And you want to kind of come to the front of the seat, so the tail is going to tilt a little bit farther back rather than rounding the back and getting the back of the tail into the floor, draw the belly in. Okay, gently release hands onto the mat, cross the legs, bring the legs out in front. Gonna find Paschimottanasana, reach the heels forward, squeeze the inner thighs. See if you can come onto the front of the seat again by tilting the tail behind. Inhale, arms up, 
Exhale, reach forward using the core, extending hips back, reaching fingertips forward. Then you can find feet. We'll inhale, flatten out the spine, maybe rocking side to side on the hips to ground the tail a little bit deeper. And exhale, fold forward. Keep on using the core and the legs to get yourself deeper. Keep on extending the crown of the head towards the toes. Rather than just dumping the forehead into the thighs, see if you can keep that extension at the back of the neck as well. Okay, so you can bring yourself upright. So we did a two-legged hero pose, Virasa Virasana. We're gonna try that one side at a time for our heron pose. So you're gonna lean over towards the left and the right foot's gonna come in for your half hero Ardha Virasana. So you may notice when the foot's back here, you're leaning over towards the left side. Either you use the core and try to ground the right side of the body a little bit deeper, drawing the belly in and moving that over towards the right side, or really easy, bunch up the left side of the mat, bring it right underneath the seat. It's not exactly working for me right now, but if you have a blanket handy just underneath the left butt cheek, it's gonna work perfectly. So you're welcome to stay right here. If you'd like to go for the heron and revolve heron crown chasana, bring the left foot in. Start by sitting up right just like this. If this feels a lot into the knee, a lot of strain into the ankle and for the hip flexor here, maybe you stay right here. You don't have to continue. Otherwise, allow the left knee to come out to the side as you find the big toe with the peace fingers. If you can't quite find the toe, a strap is gonna work perfectly as well. Sit up tall, finding the front of the seat first. So we're not leaning back and bringing this leg up, rounding the back. We're sitting up nice and tall. Knee's gonna come in and extend the left big toe up towards the sky. Bring the left shoulder blade into its socket so the chest is equal here and we're not left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. I'll come to my side just so you can see this a little bit better from the side view. You're welcome to stay right here if you'd like to find revolved hair and you can grab onto the outside of the left foot with the right hand and extend the left fingertips towards the wall behind you. This is kind of your easier variation. It's going to be a little bit harder if you grab onto the left foot with the left hand. Turn the palm over here so the thumb's going to be facing uh, the front of the room. You can find the heel, wrap the form around the thigh, then open up the left side of the body through uh, under the left arm. Keep on trying to sit up taller, using that core to lift the chest. And help bring yourself back to center. Exhale, bend the knee, gently sliding that left foot out. Right leg's gonna come out as well, very gently. I know I feel a lot into this right leg after I'm done with those. I'm gonna roll out the toe a little bit, shake the leg side to side before I do uh, the other way around. I'll stay here so you can see uh, the opposite side of the pose for this next one. So you're gonna lean over towards the left and bring the top of the left foot into the floor, close towards the glute. Heel aligned with the rest of the leg. Try not to allow the heel to come out towards the left or towards the right and see if you can press each and every toe into the floor a little bit more. May not be happening, just try. Again, if you're leaning over to the right, maybe a little lift up through that right butt cheek is gonna help us center the hips a little better. Come onto the front of the seat. We'll bring that right foot in. Maybe you're just gonna stay here, chill out in a, this shape. If you'd like to find a, your straight leg, you can bring the right knee out to the side, grab onto the big toe, extend the right toes forward, pressing into the foot as if uh, it were a gas pedal or pressing into the hand as if it were a gas pedal. Draw the right shoulder back to straighten out the leg a little bit more, even bending the elbow if you'd like. One day maybe you get the shin towards the head, maybe you're just uh, here today. You don't have to find the whole variation of the pose. Just make sure the core is working as well. To revolve left hand, finds the outside of the right foot, extend the right fingertips towards uh, the wall behind you. Keep on lifting the heart, revolving the right side of the body towards the right side of the room. Again, if you wanted to go a little bit deeper, maybe right hand finds the toes, wrap the left arm around the right leg, pull it up and bring the body underneath the right arm. Keep 
Keep on sitting up taller. Inhale. Exhale, gently release. Right foot back onto the floor. Reach it out. You can lean over to the right side. Both legs are going to come out very carefully and you can roll the toes sway side to side on the seat. One more hip opener we're going to try. Maybe you've done Marichiasana variation F before. Maybe not. It's in your half hero. We did a couple half heroes. So we'll go ahead and uh, find the twisting Marichiasana half hero variation as well. So you're going to bring the right foot on the floor. Starting in this half hero, and like we came into crown chest and a hair and pose, the left foot's going to come in. This time, instead of straightening out that left leg, we're going to turn the left knee in a little bit towards the side and bring the right arm to the outside of the left knee. Maybe you're staying right here and you're twisting over towards the left side of the room perfectly fine. If you can extend the right arm all the way forward and you're not into the elbow, you're more into the shoulder, you can rotate the palm down, thumb facing the floor wrap around. Maybe the left hand can come off the floor and you find your bind here. Marachyasana F. Keep on revolving the abdomen towards the left side of the room. Stack the shoulders. Squeeze the shoulders back into the knee. Lifting the heart. Turn the gaze over that left shoulder. Ground through those feet to sit up a little bit higher. Inhale. Exhale. Release back to center. Slowly making your way out of the pose, counter posing, shaking it out if you need. Other side, we're going to lean over to the right this time, bringing the left foot into half hero. Right foot can come onto the floor. Okay, maybe you're staying right here, or you're finding a little twist by bringing the right hand behind the back and bringing the left tricep to the outside of the right thigh. If you want to work on the full bind, the left arm extends forward. If the knee isn't pressing into the elbow, you can revolve the hand down. Reach for the inside of the right thigh, left thigh, and you can uh, grab onto the hands here. Really try to root through those feet, through the front knee as well. Turning the heart, the abdomen towards the right. Keep on sending the shoulders back into space. Deep breath in. Exhale, come back to center, gently releasing both legs out on the floor in front. Shake out the legs. So we didn't do a lot of back bending work. We'll go ahead and do a bridge or two before we close. So bring the feet underneath the knees. You can shift them closer and towards the body. Keeping the toes facing straight forward. Already squeeze the shoulder blades and maybe the elbows are coming to the insides of the body and resting less on the back and more on the tops of the shoulders and the arms. You can place the hands into the mat and lift the hips up towards the ceiling, tucking the tail, shooting it in between the thighs. Lift up. Try to get on the backs of the shoulders so you can keep on walking those shoulders inward. Good way to keep them inward is to find your Bound hands, bridge pose. Extend the knees forward, chin towards the chest, lengthen through the front of the body. And when you're ready, you can slowly soften onto the floor. You can windshield wipe the legs. Or maybe you're bringing the feet wide and the knees in towards one another. Just resting, resetting the lower back. We'll try another back bend. So if you want to go with that bridge again, do that. Maybe you find the bind or one legged. If you'd like to go deeper, maybe you're finding an upward bow this time. Same setup, except hands are going to come underneath the shoulders and maybe even do a bridge just with hands on the floor. Try to lift the weight in towards the shoulders rather than the back. Maybe you press up into your Urdhva down your ass in that upward bow. Straighten out the arms and legs a little bit more. Tuck the tail between the thighs. Make sure you're breathing. If you're up super high and you notice the breath is shortening, go ahead and just release a little bit. Inhale. Exhale, slowly come back down onto the head if you're in your upward bow. 
Gently use the hands to help slide onto the back. This time you can bring the knees in, rocking them side to side, or finding your windshield wipers, your constructive rest pose, anything that feels good after your back bends. Go ahead and bring both feet on the floor. Going to find a figure four. So bring the left knee in, turn the left knee out towards the side and place the right shin on top of the right thigh. Can stay right here. Maybe you're grabbing onto the thigh, pulling it in a little bit closer. If you wanted to make this more of a half lotus or even a full lotus, you're just going to shift this left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Maybe you're back into your figure four, kind of like this. Or like we did with the left side, right knee's going to come out. Maybe you're just holding the right foot towards the left knee. Or you can snuggle it on in, trying to find that hip crease as well. Don't try to force it. If lotus is something you come into, easily find that. Or you can just stay at the figure four as well. Maybe the knees are lifting or you're bringing the thighs onto the floor for your Sutta Padmasana Supine Lotus. We won't be here for long. Go ahead and bring the legs back up. If you're in your lotus, carefully take the legs out. If you're in figure four, gently uninterlace, bring both feet onto the floor, maybe your windshield, wiping side to side in between. And we'll try the other side. So the right knee is going to come out towards the side and right ankle on top of the left thigh. Again, stages, just pressing the right knee forward. Maybe hugging the left knee and still pressing the right knee forward, flexing the toes strongly. If you want to take this right foot and slide it down into the left hip crease, can stay right here, maybe hugging the knee in again. If you'd like to bring the left knee out and the left foot can come to the outside of the right knee, maybe be in your supine half lotus or just pull that foot and bring it towards the hip crease. Wherever the body's telling you is okay to have this pose, stay there, don't try to force anything. Maybe you're reclining into your full supine lotus. You don't have to. Gently bring the knees back up right if you're in the full supine lotus. Any uh, or wherever you are, gently uninterlace the legs. Legs come back on the floor. Counter pose in any way that feels good. Maybe a supine bound angle. And we're going to end right here. As always, if there's anything else you needed in your practice, maybe a shoulder stand, a plow, anything like that, go ahead and find it. Otherwise, we'll get nice and long on the mat. Bringing the arms and legs out wide. Just see if there's anywhere you can soften a little bit deeper. Starting more externally, letting go of the skin you feel. Just start to feel the muscles, and the organs, and the bones as well, settling deeper into the support underneath them. Just come to a place where you can completely let go. You can always move the body a little bit. Find a place where you can stay for a long period of time. If there's any discomfort in any area, you want to get rid of that now, not wait till the middle of your Shavasana and then rearrange yourself. And just notice the breath. If you're still shaping those nice deep inhales and exhales, now would be the time to let go of that breath. And just notice how your natural breath shapes the body instead. We'll quiet the mind. As you're here, you may notice thoughts are coming into your head. They always will. They may try to lead you away from the body. And if they do, just come back. Any thoughts that are leading you astray, try to not engage them, but just let go. Don't judge yourself if you keep on engaging them. Just keep on coming back to the breath, softening the body as many times as you need to. Rest here. The video will 
run a few minutes longer just for a longer Shavasana that you'll probably need, so stick around. Thanks for watching. Remember to like or comment anything if you appreciate my work here. Let me know. Namaste.